हरे कृष्णा क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम सुबुद्धि माधव प्रभु इज वर्णाश्रम नेसेसरी फॉर अ प्रैक्टिशनर ऑफ कृष्ण कॉन्शियसनेस आंसर नो इट्स नॉट नेसेसरी श्री प्रभुपाद एज क्लियरली टॉक्ड अबाउट वर्णाश्रम एज अ लेटर और अनफिनिश्ड पार्ट ऑफ इज मिशन बट देन ही ऑल्सो टोल्ड अस दैट वॉट एवर इज नीडेड फॉर आज फॉर गोइंग बैक टू गॉड हेड इज वेरी मच देयर विद इन वॉट ही इज गिवन अस एंड विद इन द ब्रॉड लेगेसी ऑफ द गौड़ी वैष्णव मूवमेंट सो वर्णाश्रम इज नॉट नेसेसरी फॉर अ डिवोटी वर्णाश्रम इज अ मटीरियल सिस्टम ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड इट इज कंड्यूसिव फॉर द प्रैक्टिस ऑफ स्परिचुअल लाइफ बट भक्ति इज अहेतुकी अ प्रतिहता इट इज अनमोटिवेटेड अन इंटरप्टेड and that means that it does not depend on any material circumstances so a devotee can <coughs> may not be as a part of varna ashram but still the devotee can practice bhakti and can uh, attain krishna's uh, abode by the practice of bhakti in due uh, by the study practice of bhakti so a supportive social system such as varna ashram is can can be helpful but it is by no means essential or indispensable भक्ति इट सेल्फ इज सेल्फ सफिशियंट फॉर प्यूरिफाइंग द डिवोटी एंड एलिवेटिंग द डिवोटी टू द हाइएस्ट लेवल ऑफ प्रेम प्योर लव ऑफ गॉड कैन वर्णाश्रम बी एस्टैब्लिश इन सिटीज ऑल्सो और इज इट ओनली फॉर विलेजेस एंड कैन यू एक्सप्लेन द वैदिक दैवी एंड असुरी वर्णाश्रम सिस्टमैटिकली आंसर यस varnashram is not dependent on the nature of the uh, nature of the uh, of living in the in the time when the varnashram was there also if you if you look at the rama and the mahabharat bhagavatam that time also there is clear description that there were cities and there were villages there were small small towns which were in between so dwarka mathura and during krishna's time these were big cities and when they were going along there were small small villages also along the way Uh, from one place to another so when varnashram was present at that time also there were cities and that time the villages also and if we see the so striking contrast the way krishna lived in vrindavan and the way he lived in mathura there's a clear difference between rural living and urban living so there was varnashram is possible in both cities and in villages it was it is a socio system of socio cultural organization that pervades that can pervade the whole human society so now i can explain <coughs> the different kinds of varnashram okay <coughs> this is a complex subject but if we look at the okay, can now before that can varnashram be established in cities or in villages is how exactly varnashram is to be established where that is something which is still under a matter of discussion and we will focus on first understanding so if we look at shri prabhupada's teachings we and if you look at the teachings of the previous acharyas bhakti samrit sindhu rupa goswami does not make any mention of varnashram among the 64 elements of bhakti and uh, bhakti vinod thakur is the first acharya who talks about varnashram uh, first gaudiya vishnu acharya who talks about varnashram in his writings and he talks about what he calls as vigyanik varnashram vigyanik is what we call scientific and that we he also refers to as daivi varnashram and beyond that he also talks about the, the then prabhupada is also talking about different things so his statements we can understand at four different levels we could say that is natural varnashram natural varnashram means basically where the four varnas are four innate human types that means there are different people who have different dispositions there are some people who are intellectual some are administrator some are uh, of a mercantile nature and some are uh, some are general assistants so this is a broad social division which is present in every society you know every society Uh, wherever we go in this world there are some people who are intellectuals some people are like so these are this is a natural varnashram we could say in terms of that naturally when people are born and people grow up people have these broad four divisions 
So we could call this as natural varanasram and the varanas are definitely not caste, they are broadly like human types. So natural varanasram or we could call it. So these are basically in that sense four divisions. So Prabhupada at one time he said that I have come here to, uh, to the west to look for brahmanas. Uh, that is with respect to uh, the, so when he is looking for brahmanas means now where, how are brahmanas to be found in America. He is not talking about uh, brahmanas as they are understood in the uh, conception in India. He is talking about people who are intellectuals, who think about higher things, uh, uh, higher things in life who, with an intellectual framework. So now that's uh, natural. It's in terms of nature, humans are divided into these four four broad types. Then beyond that, is there anything else? There is varanashram in terms of the we could say uh, as it exists in today's world in India especially. That is what is called as asuri varanashram. Okay, before that we can talk about uh, Vedic varanashram. Vedic varanashram was the division of society into four broad castes. So it is where the natural human types, it's recognized that people are of different divisions and then they are trained accordingly. Today now if somebody is an intellectual, there is no social system of training the person to become an intellectual. People have to uh, rely on their own skills and then find out them, make the appropriate contacts, get into the appropriate systems and then they may become trained as intellectuals and same with uh, becoming administrators or becoming business business people, whatever. So uh, the point is that the Vedic Varnashram <coughs> focused on recognizing people's basic types and uh, arranging them, arranging the social structure in such a way that they could be trained according to their human types. Now there is a whole uh, broad philosophy underlying this, where it is understood that. The people are that say if a, that that their souls go from one generation to another. That that souls are attracted to a particular couple uh, when the couple unite according to the level of consciousness. So a brahmana and a brahmani when they unite, then a brahmanical soul is attracted into their into the womb, and a, a brahmanical child is born. So the Vedic Varnashram was. In this sense, there was uh, <coughs> there was a large amount of correlation between uh, the social vocation and the genealogical continuation. So that means Brahmana's children would become Brahmanas, so Kshatriya's children would become Kshatriyas. That was expected of them and that's what generally they would do. But it is recognized that not all Brahmana's children will automatically be Brahmanas. That's why there is the concept of Brahma Bandhu. Those who are born in Brahmanas and they are relatives of Brahmanas, but they are themselves not Brahmanas. So it is understood that one has to become trained and one has to develop qualities. Only when one has developed qualities, then one can be called as a Brahmana. Otherwise, one is a Brahma Bandhu, one is not exactly a, not a Brahmana. So the Vedic Varnashram was where there was a social structure which enabled people to, <coughs> to go along with their the, the natures and get trained and develop uh, the make social contributions according to the social structure. So now over time this social division which which was uh, which was largely according to birth but it was not defined by birth. It was defined by qualities and to some extent a so, uh, person who was a Brahmana, born in the Brahmana family uh, that person if that was it, it was a soul with brahmanical disposition and then got a brahmanical upbringing and there's a fairly good likelihood that the brahmana's child would become a brahmana but it was not necessary the asuri varanashram which is what pervades society today in india that is the presumption so rather than seeing varana as a human type uh, <coughs> varana became a racial designation so, <coughs> Varana is a human type, not a, uh, a not a genealogical des designation, not racial, a genealogical designation. Genealogical designation means that, okay, if somebody is born in a particular family, then that person automatically is meant to be a Brahmana. And this division led to the uh, self-arrogation of caste privileges by higher castes and the uh, exploitation of the lower caste and there was huge protest. There was 
terrible regrettable amounts of discrimination that happened because of this and there was a rejection of all this eventually and there is a rebellion and so the asuri varnashram is one of the one of the con defining conceptions of asuras is one one thing that one is the body and the bodily reality is the defining reality it is the ultimate reality so the brahmana started thinking that because we are brahman in the brahmanical family that's why we are the highest among all the varnas and we are meant to be be respected and we are meant to be practically like the lords of others and the shudras they were looked down upon and they were exploited and uh, this happened and of course this did not happen everywhere in the world it happened everywhere in india also in some parts it happened but there was this discrimination that was there so this is a demoniac system of varnashram that means where birth right made it wrong so birth itself does not make everything right one has to develop the right qualities but when birth right was claimed by the higher castes uh, as a as a right for getting the uh, membership of a elite group that led to the asuri varnashram and that led to exploitation that is definitely rejected by the acharyas Uh, by the within the within with the under conclusion understanding of vaishnavism now beyond that there is so there is natural varnashram there is vedic varnashram there is presently asuri varnashram and then there is daivi varnashram so now the recreating the whole social structure of varnashram today is quite difficult but daivi varnashram means we accept the social division but we don't accept the the underlying philosophy we focus on the principle that so in the vedic varnashram the idea was a shudra by doing punya uh, will come from the say shudra level to the um, a shudra by living as a shudra by doing the duties of shudra in the future uh, life be born as a vaishya and then a vaishya will be born as a kshatriya kshatriya will be born as a brahmana and eventually one will attain swarga and one will move on towards liberation gradually so it is considered a very uh, slow multiple lifetime progression through the uh, strict adherence to one's caste duties but uh, bhakti universalized the access to transcendence and therefore the bhakti philosophy and the bhakti practices were open for everyone so in daivi varnashram this is what is hinted at in bhagavatam when it says that atah pumbir jasveshta varnashram bhagasha sanushtitase dharmasya samsiddhir haritoshanam at the purpose of the varnashram vibhag the division to varnashram is samsiddhir haritoshanam it is satisfaction of lord hari so now if we move onwards and consider further what is happening here the important point is that um, within the today's social structure when there is no supportive social structure people find spiritual life very difficult to practice so the prabhupad felt that a supportive social structure will be helpful for people for people to practice bhakti so initially prabhupad's idea was that the, if we look at the 1960s lectures he is saying that there is no need for varnashram that system has more or less collapsed and we can just practice bhakti and transcend but then we see more on where prabhupad says that varnashram is needed for the people in general otherwise people will be chaotic then prabhupad later says that oh varnashram is needed for you devotees also and then there will be a gradual system or by which one can support a system by which one can progress so we could say that <coughs> the practice of bhakti is like walking on a tight rope and varnashram the culture is like a safety net below so now uh, varnashram itself how it is to be established the prabhupad talked in terms of the goals he did not talk in terms of the practical processes so for example he said okay Brahm brahmana should be trained in such a way that they will develop this this qualities kshatriya should be trained in such a way that they will develop these these qualities so now what is the specific training that is required that is something which is uh, which is still being discussed so the essential principle of varnashram is what it is not so much of division into four levels it is more of a, a arrangement of society in a way that can enable people to keep moving towards god to do their material work in a way that is uh, harmonious with their spiritual purpose 
so within varanasram a people who are of intellectual disposition they are they need to be intellectual that's what their disposition is but they can be well being intellectual instead of trying to talk about uh, instead of using their intellect in various uh, kinds of speculation various kinds of contemplation speculations one uses one intellect to study scripture understand scripture and to study uh, broadly con- subjects connected with higher spiritual themes so similarly one has to earn a living by say as a kshatriya one is a kshatriya but one does it as a god conscious ruler so the idea of varanashram is to focus to provide a conducive social environment where people can practice bhakti so where where at least the well the pursuit of one's material living does livelihood does not militate against one's spiritual practices today the world is la- world is largely materialistic and because of that often for devotees it is difficult to practice a spiritual life and often the professional environment is not only apathetic but it is antipathetic towards one's spiritual practices so if different devotees can come if devotees can come together and form a group a cohesive group that enables them to uh, to in a devotional environment Uh, earn their living that itself could be a model of varanashram today so for example if devotees come together if they say there are many devotees several devotees or doctors they come together and make a hospital which is on devotional principles then that could be a working model of varanashram if say devotees chil- devotees come to parents come together and make a school where in addition to uh, uh, where spiritual subjects and spiritual values are also taught along with whatever is the curriculum that is in that particular country that could also be uh a uh, some kind of uh, some level of approximation of varanashram so can varanashram be practiced in cities one per day? yes of course at that level it can be practiced in city that means trying to take care of uh, the material needs of devotees within a spiritual setting with uh, in a way that is conducive to one spiritual life that is the essence of varanashram so whether people in various parts of the world can be divided into four divisions and who will fall in which division and on what basis will that be decided who will decide that these are all questions for which there are no easy answers so varanashram should not be treated like a magic wand which will solve all problems we need to know that the only pure love for krishna can solve that all the problems and varanashram can act as a supportive social system so wherever it is possible certain some of the spiritual leaders within our movement are also working on trying to establish some some models of varanashram but the essential principle is that to have a material environment that is conducive for one's spiritual practice and how that will work out for different people in different time place circumstances that will vary and that is where the resourcefulness of the individual devotee seekers as well as the uh, wisdom of the devotees guides all this comes into the picture and that's why the varanashram is very much a, uh, is going to be a part of the living tradition of our movement of how that is the tradition that is translated and made relevant and and beneficial for the living practitioners of the tradition that is something which will event which will gradually emerge so farm com- eco friendly farm communities uh, where where devotees Uh, live in a way that is natural in terms of earning uh, through nature and in a way that is also helpful for moving towards uh, which also helps to want to move towards the practice of bhakti that is uh, considered one ex- one way in which varanashram can be implemented but overall varanashram is very much uh, something uh, under discussion about how it can be implemented and uh, depending on different time place circumstances there will be different modes of implementation of the principle of making one's material life harmonious with one's spiritual life which is the underlies principle of varanashram as it is uh, for a devotee sadhaka thank you hari krishna